to 3764. Elvis Presley Boulevard. Hit it, Elvis. You got to eat. We're in Dayton, Ohio at the University of Dayton Arena. Elvis played here as part of the Elvis on Tour when Elvis on Tour was being filmed. Uh, he played here on April 7th before 13,788 fans. And um, he wore the white fireworks jumpsuit. He came back on October 6, 1974 and did two shows. And one day, the, the afternoon show, he wore the blue swirl jumpsuit. And in the evening show, he wore the uh, dragon suit. And he performed that show before 13,500. He came back again for the final time on October 26, 1976. And for whatever reason, uh, I guess the fire marshal's office came over and decided he was only going to play for 13,000 flat for that show. The building, we, we were showing historical photos. Uh, this is another one of those buildings that have basically been encased uh, within a new facade. The building looks absolutely beautiful. While touring UD Arena, a thought kept coming to mind. The building has changed dramatically, but it's still here. There are so many buildings that we have lost through the years, but UD Arena still stands. So you have to ask, change or loss forever? When we photograph the corridors, it's our hope that enough remains from the 1970s that will spark a memory for the fans that were there. It was nice to see the arena embrace their history with a then and now display. There are many dressing rooms Elvis could have used and it was hard to narrow down which one, but we do know that this is the hallway Elvis would have used to get to the dressing room and then the short walk to the stage. Well, I'm going 
For some, it may be hard to see, but this is one of the lineups we got inside the arena. Here, Elvis is taking the stage during his afternoon show. In this photo, you can see a beam behind Elvis. That beam is still present today. If you look close enough, you can see the slanted wall to the left of Elvis, which is also still there. It's a hard to see lineup, but we were able to find it. It's always fun when we have a ticket in our collection that goes with the building we are touring. So we took ours along to Dayton and sat in the exact spot as this fan did on October 6, 1974, and this was their view. Our tour sheets for the April 1972 tour stated that Elvis stayed at this hotel at 210 North Main Street in Dayton. A brief clip of this hotel can be seen in Elvis on Tour. Although it is now a home for the elderly, we were granted permission to gain access to all the areas that pertain to Elvis's visit to the hotel. A member of the staff was kind enough to take us to the floor that Elvis occupied and showed us the doors that led to the adjoining suites that he occupied, 1709 and 1710. One of our main goals during this tour was to film from the roof of this hotel the exact shot that MGM filmed in 1972 for Elvis on tour. I was granted permission to go out on the roof to recreate the shot. The only difference is that since 1972, a building to my right was added that interfered with this picture. In the film Elvis on Tour, the building you see just prior to the bridge on the right is a fire station. Fire Station 4 is still there today, on duty, just like it was 50 years ago. So in the movie Elvis on Tour, you see a scene where there's a gentleman ex uh, explaining how Elvis will be led out of the building. And Elvis stayed on the 17th floor, came down on this freight elevator, and there's a scene in there where there's two doors close together. And basically, it's these doors right here have been changed, obviously, over a 50-year period since the movie. But Basically, these two doors in the movie are back to back, very close together. These two doors are open. They came out and made a turn, went down this hallway. That area leads to the kitchen. What was the kitchen? And this is quintessential Elvis because this is how he was typically let out of buildings, out of side entrance or a back entrance. Car parked here, and they're gone. Our tour sheets indicate that in 1974, Elvis stayed at the Mall Motor Inn, an upscale hotel located at 21 South Jefferson. That hotel has since been demolished. In 1976, Elvis stayed at the Stouffer's Inn, which is now the Radisson. We were taken on the exact route that Elvis used to get from his car to his room. The route included going from the car to a service elevator in the back of the building, which then took him to the second floor. From there, he walked through a kitchen to another service elevator that would take him to the top floor. After arriving on the top floor, he was taken to his room. This definitely was a roundabout way of getting from point A to point B, but this was the safest and only way he could have gotten from the car to his room. Okay, we're at the what was the Stouffer's Inn in Dayton, Ohio. And this is where Elvis stayed uh, during his tour in October 1976. So on October 26th, uh, he did a show at the Dayton Arena. And I don't know if Michael can see it, but just over there, you see the building that has the slope in the roof. Uh, that's how close uh, they were to the uh, actual building where they performed that night. And we're on the ninth floor. Um, it was a Stouffer's, and then it turned into a Crown Plaza, and then now it's a Radisson. And like I say, we're on the ninth floor, and the way this hotel was set up is the suites that, uh, you know, the high-end uh, guests would have used, you know, such as like Elvis when he came on tour. Um, these were the rooms that they would have used. Now. There are two rooms that are exactly the same that butt up against each other. And so this is the setup. Michael can paint around and show you the entire uh, suite. It has like a living room area. Um, 
and then table. It really reminds me strongly of when we were in Wichita. Uh, it really reminds me of the room that Elvis used in um, during that tour uh, when they were in Wichita in uh, December of 76. But basically what we want to show you is that this is the this is the main room of the suite and then right in here uh, is the bedroom and as you guys know what we never do at Elvis back on tours we don't speculate uh, and I'm not going to start today so what we're what we're trying to say is since these two rooms are exactly the same um, we have no way of knowing if Elvis stayed in this room or in that room but it really doesn't matter because this room looks exactly like the room over there. So we just want to give you an idea of, of the layout, the floor plan. Obviously, as anybody would be able to tell, uh, common sense would dictate that obviously furnings have definitely changed, uh, but we've been assured that the footprint of the building has remained the same, the footprint of the room, um, that has not changed at all. But uh, what we were also told, um, by the lady giving us the tour here is that basically this was a very high-end hotel uh, you know in the day and it's still a very nice hotel uh, and we just want to give you a good idea of what the what the rooms look like and um, but we just again we just don't want to speculate. Michael and I want to thank Brittany Klinger for our tour of the Radisson Hotel. Scott DeBolt, Senior Athletic Director, Patrick Donnelly, Director of Events, and the entire staff who assisted with our tour of UD Arena. Not only were they very welcoming and interested in our project, their kindness and hospitality were beyond exceptional. We'd like to thank our friend Keith Alverson for allowing us to use some of the photos he took from Elvis's shows in Dayton. We met Keith for the first time during Elvis Week 2022, and he was super kind and we purchased some amazing items including Volume 1 of his two-volume book set, Strictly Elvis, which contains thousands of photos he took from 1973 to 1977. If you ever get a chance to meet Keith, we highly recommend getting his book and purchasing a photo or two from him. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe as well as follow us on all of our social media accounts using the link in the description below.